Hi everyone, I'm Matt French, and this is my honors capstone presentation. Um, Aaron Ridley was also my capstone advisor for the project. Um, so I was on MFly, which is a student project team here at the University of Michigan. Um, MFly designs and builds uh, from scratch uh, competition aircraft. Um, so as part of that student organization, um, I was on a team to um, build a plane to submit to the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International Student Unmanned Aerial Systems Competition. Sorry, that's a mouthful. Um, so basically I was on a team that designed the plane um, that we were submitting to this competition. Um, so the way it works is the um, competition body um, releases a specification for the mission. Um, they do things like limit the aircraft in several ways um, and divide, uh, design some, some mission goals um, that the aircraft should complete. Um, so in the 2020 competition, um, the idea was that the aircraft should kind of simulate a package delivery. Um, so the tasks involved um, were basically that the aircraft be autonomous. Um, it would fly through basically a series of waypoints um, all while avoiding obstacles. These were kind of to simulate buildings and structures in real life, things like that. Um, they also had to kind of have a camera on board um, and image the ground at the same time. Um, from these images, basically there was a requirement to um, search and find um, static and dynamic objects um, using uh, computer vision methods um, or kind of other methods. Um, and also there was a, um, a payload drop uh, involved. Um, so out of the uh, aerial plane, um, you were supposed to drop basically uh, an unmanned ground vehicle, which it itself kind of was an autonomous system. Um, and that was kind of meant to simulate the droppage of a package delivery robot that would then you know, drive on the ground um, up to your doorstep or something like that. So basically you had to drop at a drop location and have your ground vehicle drive elsewhere. Um, and these were like 30 minutes, 30 minute uh, flights. Um, so kind of to, just to talk about the, the system that I designed to kind of enable these missions to be completed. Um, it was kind of a system of um, a bunch of different components. Um, kind of one of the key parts of that system was the autopilot itself. Um, so this is what we used for the autopilot. Um, this this Pixhawk 4 kind of um, enabled our plane to kind of have automatic control of its control surfaces and throttle. Um, basically could allow us to steer through different waypoints and things like that. Um, um, kind of moving on, uh, we had an onboard flight computer. So while the autopilot kind of is trolling the plane mechanics, this flight controller kind of, or sorry, this uh, flight computer was kind of running the software that was running kind of our path planning, um, as well as doing the object uh, recognition tasks. Um, it was also kind of um, monitoring telemetry and kind of uh, actuating the drop when necessary. Um, so kind of everything else uh, aside from the plane mechanics that this flight computer is doing. So that, that was also on board. Um, just to talk about kind of the general communication scheme of the whole project, um, uh, the, the plane, we called it the MAT-3 uh, for Mission Autonomous, and it was the third iteration. Um, you can kind of see that in, in that blue bubble at the top. Um, and then those two, two components that I mentioned, the Raspberry Pi and the autopilot in red, um, in purple there, you kind of have all those connected uh, sensors. So a few that I'll point out, um, the autopilot kind of controls the servos, but it also takes in um, measurements from a GPS and compass, um, and then also like an airspeed sensor from a pitot tube. Um, the Raspberry Pi kind of similarly controls the camera. Um, we also fly um, alongside other competitors. Um, so we kind of needed a d detect and avoidance um, sensor. Um, and that development was kind of pushed off in favor of more um, uh, foundational um, kind of design. Um, but I, I'll, I'll talk about that at the end of the presentation. And then in white, you can see um, all of kind of the radio equipment um, paired with all the, the gold boxes are kind of antennas. Um, 
so from this diagram, you can see that there's actually three links uh, from the MAT3 plane itself uh, to the ground at various locations. Um, and these kind of enable different things. Um, so for one, there is kind of that 2.4 gigahertz link you can see on the far right, um, which is actually a manual uh, control of the plane um, that's kind of required by competition for safety. Um, the two on the left are one telemetry from our autopilot um, and then two, kind of a separate link is that 5.8 gigahertz link. Um, it's actually a Wi-Fi connection. Um, so this kind of enables our plane to be kind of on the same um, Wi-Fi network, uh, so to speak, the local network uh, as the ground station. Um, and that was really good for enabling um, kind of different software tests. Um, and then finally, that dropped UGB, you can see on the bottom there, um, there's also kind of a telemetry link from that dropped vehicle to the ground as well. Um, so just to talk about the communications uh, hardware itself, um, like I mentioned, there's kind of three different um, frequency bands that we use. Um, one being for telemetry, one being for that software kind of link, and then the final for um, kind of an RC manual override. Um, there are a variety of different radios and antennas that we used um, to make that happen. And they're, they're kind of shown on the screen there. Um, so antenna placement was kind of a big deal for us. Um, earlier iterations um, really struggled with communications. Um, in, in particular, um, the MAT-3 was MFly's first completely carbon composite um, designed plane. Um, and along with that kind of came complications. Um, for one, uh, we actually lost an early version of it um, kind of due to a loss of signal. Um, so the original plane had kind of two smaller antennas at, at the top where you can kind of see those two red circles. Um, and because of the particular orientation of the plane, uh, the composite wings actually blocked our line of sight to the ground um, and we lost connection and, and crashed the plane. Um, so as a result of that, um, we kind of upgraded the, that hardware um, and went for four separate antennas. They're placed around the plane in such a way that at any rotation of the plane, um, two antennas are essentially visible from the ground. Um, and this kind of enables some redundancy um, that we should never um, again, you know, lose a plane due to that. Um, so this project also involved a lot of design of the system um, and picking components and such, um, things like that. Um, but also a big part of it was testing. Um, like I mentioned, it's, it's, it's very difficult to, sorry about that. Um, I, it's, it's difficult to kind of send your system up, up into the sky untested. So kind of what we do is test some things on the ground that we can. Um, and kind of incrementally um, move forward with um, our design until we feel comfortable. Um, sorry about that, my dog is walking around. Um, until we feel comfortable, you know, setting it up into the sky. Um, so here you can see the results of a ground test. Um, so what we did was kind of walk the plane away from its base station and kind of evaluate how the different communication links responded to that. Um, we tested two of the two of the three links during that test. Um, the most critical being the manual control link on 900 megahertz and the telemetry link. Um, that software link kind of wasn't exactly ready to test because of um, the software communications. Basically, uh, weren't weren't exactly ready to test the the complete bandwidth of of that link. Um, so the competition maximum range is about 0.62 miles. Um, and you can see here that our, our tested ranges were above that. Um, we also project that that software link also uh, will be above um, that range. Um, and then kind of moving forward with the camera hardware, um, because of the, the, the requirement for some computer vision, um, we had to select a camera. Um, this was largely driven by um, kind of the choice to use that Raspberry Pi as the um, onboard co-computer. Uh, um, this camera works really well with it. You can see that ribbon cable um, that, that plugs basically directly in um, and there's libraries that exist on the Pi to control it. So um, it was a great choice. It's high resolution, um, it's low field of view. So it means we're taking lots of images, um, but it's narrow enough that, that um, the camera gets a good um, idea of what the ground looks like. Um, and we kind of, kind of run our, our models based on this. 
Um, to talk about the wiring harness, um, you can just kind of see all those different components. This was a large part of the build of, of, of the project. Um, there's lots of soldering, making custom cables, things like that. Um, you can kind of see all the components that I mentioned here, including that Raspberry Pi at the top right, uh, the flight controller and its power board on the left. Kind of anything in blue is a communications link. Um, you can see batteries, the servos are in the bottom right in green. Um, you can also see that camera and its gimbal. Um, our flight controller actually uh, automatically will uh, stabilize that gimbal as well. Um, so that's kind of how we're able to always keep pointed down. And then in the middle there, I'll mention, um, we actually designed a custom switchboard um, as a safety override. Um, so this basically enables us to, um, at any point during flight, um, switch over from direct radio control uh, instead of the output from our flight controller. So it's just another safety aspect that we built in there. Um, this, this slide shows kind of where everything is located in the plane. Um, so it's a pretty large plane. Um, the wingspan is larger than the average human wingspan. Um, I think it was around nine feet, something like that. Um, so you can kind of see the components placed throughout the plane. I'll, I'll mention in, in the photo on the right, uh, those white bars are kind of two of the three antennas that we had, um, and the, the other antennas were shown earlier. Okay, so this is a video of a test flight um, from the system. It's actually MFly's first ever uh, autonomous flight. Um, and so I'll play the video here. Um, so as you can see, kind of that pink um, bar, um, this is actually a reconstruction of the telemetry from that flight. Um, so this is kind of shown in Google Earth. That's not a real camera. Um, it's, it's kind of a recreation of the path that the plane flew. So you, you're kind of getting a POV view. Um, and in this autonomous mode, uh, the plane is set to um, stay basically at a constant roll angle. Um, this is kind of a safety mode um, that causes the plane to fly in a circle. So you can see that that occurs. Uh, you can kind of see a crossover itself here, um, and that's kind of just because it was pushed downrange. Okay, so here is another. Uh, okay, so here is another test flight. Um, this one's a little bit shorter, and it's a waypoint test. So essentially, a waypoint was set off to the right of the plane, um, and while it's being flown manually, net once it uh, is set to autonomous mode, you can see it make a hard right turn, um, and then fly basically at a constant uh, altitude uh, towards that waypoint. Um, so this is kind of uh, the beginning stages of, of following that waypoint path uh, during competition. Um, yep, so after it hits that waypoint, we switch it back to manual and, and kind of fly it on. Okay, so as you can see, um, the, the system was successful um, in flying um, in autonomous flight. Um, unfortunately, the, the year was kind of shut, cut short for us due to COVID comp, uh, complications. The, the uh, competition itself actually got canceled. Um, so we kind of, we were unable to kind of test the system further, um, but expect that it would have performed uh, pretty well. Um, so this project um, was kind of worked on over the course of the year, um, but there's still a lot more do, uh, to do uh, to improve the system uh, and kind of advance forward. Uh, for one, like I, like I said, that detect and avoidance uh, component um, is something that's, that's still needed. Um, we've kind of done experiments with radar, uh, stereo vision, uh, LIDAR, uh, a couple of the solutions, um, but a little bit more research is, is needed there. Um, I also didn't talk much about the UGV, the, the payload drop itself. Uh, very much. Um, and this kind of, again, we were kind of focusing on, on the plane system. Um, like I said, we've never done autonomous flight before on MFly. Um, so that was kind of where the focus really lied. Um, and now that kind of we have that, that system up and running, um, those other sort of peripheral uh, or secondary uh, systems, you know, th those can uh, be developed. Um, yeah, so all in all, um, great project. It was, um, a great opportunity to kind of learn about you know the design process. Um, also, I'll mention uh, MFly is run uh, very similarly to a business. You know, you have different sub teams. Um, you have kind of a controlling executive board, um, things like that. Um, you know, your interactions are you know among uh, you know between between engineers of of kind of different backgrounds. You're talking to the business team. You're managing budget. 
Um, so this project was also a, you know, a great way to get some experience um, with working um, at design kind of in a multidisciplinary uh, setting. Um, so yeah, um, I learned a lot um, throughout the year um, and um, I'd love now to you know, show you those results. Um, so thanks for listening.